Wonderful scenes from last year's Vodacom Durban July Day. Welcome to the show, our annual preview of all 12 races that are scheduled to be run at the 2013 Vodacom Durban July Race Day. That's this coming Saturday, the 6th of July. And my two form students that are joining me here in the Gravel studio this evening. On the far side, Justin for Mark is away to my right. And of course, Sheldon Peters. Uh, Justin, uh, your life's taken a new turn in, uh, in this last uh, couple of months. Uh, now the racing manager for Main Chance Farms and yet uh, staying in touch with the jockeys, still, a, still an agent for a few. Yes, yeah, 100%. I'm still working for Samanga and Raymond. Uh, they keep me busy. But uh, it's been a great start at Main Chance. Uh, get, uh, we've got 40 odd horses in training and I get around to watch them all working and plot their programs with the various trainers. And so, yeah, it suits me and I'm enjoying getting around. As a racing enthusiast and as a jockey's agent for a while now, obviously form studying uh, forms an integral part of your day every, every day. Yes, yeah, I know that's right. And obviously um, I was lucky enough to be a handicapper for about a year as well. So I uh, learned a bit there and yeah, it's helped me a lot with all my doing rides for various people and uh, betting as well. Well, the whole country's watching. You're going to put uh, your reputation on the line this evening. It's never easy at the Vodacom Durban July. All the races are generally tough. And I think this year is no exception. Sheldon, you were saying you think it's a tougher card than last year. Place accumulator, always a good bet to catch on this day? Always a very good bet. If you look at the card on the whole, very, very tough racing, tricky races. A couple of races, I think a little bit trickier than last year. But all in all, it's always a difficult card if you structure those place accumulators right in the pick sixes. There's always money to be made. Now to commentator, 12th Vodacom Durban July on the horizon. 12th July this year, looking really forward to it. And once again, you know that feeling in the commentary box when the horses jump from the gates in these big races and you've got a nice crowd of some 50, 60,000 people on course. You can't describe that feeling. Now you share the duties, obviously the coverage of the Vodacom Durban July is divided between the on-course commentary and obviously the SABC commentary. Have you flipped the coin uh, with your father, Craig, who's been around obviously a lot longer than you have? I'm not sure how many Julys he's called. Uh, but who's doing the on-course and uh, who's doing the SABC broadcast? I think it's my dad's 28th or 29th July. He'll be doing the SABC broadcast. I'll do the on-course and teletrack again this year. And talking about the SABC broadcast, uh, we go on for two and a half hours uh, on SABC on Saturday. So lots uh, for the entire country to look forward to. Obviously, Channel 239, Teletrack, will be very much focused on all of the activity at Gravel. Some of the arrangements uh, pertaining to the Vodacom Durban July before we kick off our discussion. Just to remind you that, of course, Totalizator betting opens tomorrow. That's Monday the 1st of July. Monday the 1st of July, Totalizator betting opens on all the races. Uh, so you've got ample opportunity to get on early and also to get those all-to-comes rolling. And also just an early reminder, we will remind you through the course of the show again when we talk about the Vodacom Durban July itself. Six places again on the Vodacom Durban July. Two jackpots as always. Place accumulator kicking off with race three and the pick six with race four. So let's get straight into the first race. It's the Bull Silvano MR78 handicap over 1400 meters. Now, last year, we also started with a 1,400-meter handicap. I don't want to put Sheldon under too much pressure, but he really did the entire country a huge favor last year, got me off to a flying start, came in the studio at last year's show and said, I think Rocky Bay at 20 to 1 will win the first race. Duly arrived. We all had our money on, got off to a great start. Have you found us another Rocky Bay as we look at the field in the background? Have you found us another Rocky Bay? In fact, there are... A uh, full card of runners, they can uh, slip over to the balance of the field in just a moment. Looking at the first race, once again, I think we can start off with a bit of value. Obviously, runner-up last year was number 13, Stolen Destiny. He's got some sort of chance. He'll be a nice, decent price. But number 10, Shimmer and Shine from the Justin Snaith stable. I think we can Shimmer and Shine in the first race, a nice each-way bet. And just per predicting his price should be about 8 to 1, 10 to 1 in the first race. And the reason I like him, if you look at his run last year that in that 1400, he finished second to a horse called War Horse. He's come down in the ratings from a 94, he's running off a 79, and he's lost two efforts behind Midnight Run and Run For It. I think they were prep runs for this race, and I believe from a neat draw, blinkers back on, he could get us off to a good start. So both Stolen Destiny and Shimmer and Shine in action on this day last year. 
as you quite rightly point out, uh, Shimmer and Shine was in one of the top juvenile races. So well spotted, drawn five. Bernard Fay Derby in terrific form. Of course, Justin Snaith has just set a new all-time South African record for the number of wins in a season. So well done to the entire Snaith racing team. And they would love nothing better than to get off uh, with a flying start on Vodacom Durban July Day. But obviously Stolen Destiny, who likes his 1,400 metres, runs on well. He's carrying a half a kilogram less than last year. He must be a danger. He's got to be a danger. If you look at that run, he came flashing through. And you'd remember you called the race when he came from an absolute hopeless position. He gets very worked up at the gates. He doesn't want to go in. He plays around. He rears. But when he puts his mind to the job at hand, he can really gallop. So maybe in the first race, nice swingers, exactors, trifectas, number 10, Shimmer and Shine, number 13, Stolen Destiny, and maybe one or two other roughies. Justin, how do you see the first? Originally, I liked 12. Money doesn't count, but um, I think we just need to find out a bit more because today the horse was scratched. So I'm not sure if there's a lameness, lameness issue there. But the horse has drawn one. Good, solid Joburg form. Strikers riding. And uh, I can't stress enough the importance of a good draw over 12, 14, 1600 at Cracknell. Paramount importance. Um, the mutant, the mutant here I respect. Scott Kenny's bringing it down. The blinkers were off last time and he went up a division, ran a good race, was coming on from the back of the field. Uh, he's got the four claim on, so I, I think he'll be there as well. But I also like, sh I like a bit of shimmer and shine. As uh, Sheldon said, he's second in a group one as a two-year-old. He was a 94 and he's come right down to a 79 now. Well drawn, he's got the blinkers on. Uh, third run in KZN. So everything points to a good run from him. Stolen Destiny must have a chance. I mean, he's been competitive off 78, 79 before, and he's back to a 77 now. He's just, he doesn't seem to be in top form at the moment, which is a, a bit of a concern. But, uh, yeah, otherwise, I pretty much agree with those sentiments. At least they're all, they're all pretty well drawn, which is obviously very important. Yeah, the draw is obviously is important. The false rail, we're going to have two false rails in Vodacom Durban July Day, as we always do. Uh, the uh, first six races will be run a rail around the 13, 14 metre mark and uh, from the Vodacom Durban July on races 7 through to 12, uh, around about 8 or 9 metres. Uh, so that's uh, the position with the false rails. But before we move away from the first race, because we're also going to, at this year's Vodacom Durban July, we're going to be welcoming back two of our sons who are globetrotting, uh, Glenn Schofield and Greg Shee. Now Glenn rides, uh, this will be his first race at Gravel for quite a while. He rides a horse that's in very good form. Uh, the Des Egdes train few rod quality, but he does have that 13 gate to overcome, um, and uh, he's yet to race at Gravel. Uh, Sheldon, is that a worry for you? It's got to be a slight concern. A horse running at Gravel for the first time on the big race day. From that draw, he's going to need a lot of luck in the running. He is a horse who can quicken up. We saw last time out, he quickens up very, very well. The likelihood of a good pace, I think there'll be a good pace in the first race. The adrenaline's going to be pumping. And for your art quality, Des Edges had a big runner today. Koi Boy came and ran a cracker in that million race. So I think for your art quality, definitely one for the trifectas and quartets. Okay, just to remind all of our viewers, of course, it's a whole week to race day, or just about a week to race day. Uh, we don't have any card changes, so we're assuming they're all runners at this stage. The reserve runners may come in if there are a few scratchings. So obviously, all that we're advising is subject to the card changes that will be announced during the course of the week. Shimmer and Shine gets a positive vote from both of our panellists. Probably fair to say that Sheldon is a bit more bullish about Shimmer and Shine. Justin liking a bit of money doesn't count, but we need to see whether that's going to take its place. Stolen Destiny, second in this race last year, loves a gravel 1400, and provided he gets away uh, reasonably on terms, uh, could be a very strong runner. But that said, it doesn't end there. We can't go through them all. I've tried to get these guys to nail their colours to the master, narrow the fields down. We're not going to go through each and every runner, uh, but it's wide open and a competitive start, as you would imagine. An MR78 handicap over 1,400 metres is always going to be competitive. Now, one of the features for many years on Vodacom Durban July Day has been the first opportunity for the juveniles to go a bit of a trip. And so the second race honours our 2011 race winner, Igugu. It's the Igugu Juvenile Plate over 1,900 metres. So obviously none of them have been that far. Interesting carded runner is number 11, Manevik, who won today at Clarewood. Uh, but let's start off with Justin this time. Uh, you've, uh, obviously it's always exciting to look at the two-year-olds from the time that they start racing over 800 metres. Justin, there's the field in the background. Uh, what do you make of this race? Uh, to be honest, I think Mr. DeCock holds the aces here. Um, very impressive, number four, Mgio on debut. Daniel Dance out of a saddle as well as me. 1900, should be looking for that type of trip. 
the ten horse gone, baby gone. A grazer, none of a load mare. Really had no business in a six furlong first time out and ran a very good race. Uh, he was very green, but making up good headway. And I think this is the type of horse who will show a lot of progression, a lot of improvement in a 1900. Um, of the winners, Delaware Bay has got a bit of a deep draw, but a 1900, it shouldn't be such a factor. Out of a raccoon mare, so also should be relishing the ground. The only worry for me there is that there's been, I think, 12 runners out of that form and only three places, not one winner. And then out of the 1914 run, there's been one winner as well. So Delaware Bay, in fact, has only ever beaten one subsequent winner, which is a worry for the form. But with these two-year-olds progressing at such varying rates, uh, you know, uh, the collateral form is not usually of a huge importance. Also, uh, Magrura, the filly, she must have a bit of a chance, ran in a feature last time, but will also enjoy the 1900 step up. If I'd ask you to uh, narrow that down to one horse, who would be your top selection for this, the second race? It would have to be for Mguia, definitely. You share the view, Sheldon? I've got to agree with Justin. Mguia, his, his debut was very, very impressive. He came from a long way back on that occasion. And just with the natural improvement, he's going to come on leaps and bounds. You would expect him to be the horse to beat. Gone Baby Gone will be the improver. And a little bit of a shooty here from the Frank Robinson stable, number two, Emperor Neocus. This is a horse who, when Donovan Dillon stepped off him early on, he said, watch this horse when he goes 1,600 plus. His last run, he was beaten just over three lengths by Captain's Reserve, who's a top-class individual. And I just feel Emperor Neocus, he's not going to be too far off the action. Maybe a nice place bet. Well, I'm glad you mentioned him because he's one that caught my eye as a likely improver over this trip. Bam Yeska's approval out of a a daughter of Strike Smart. His form is pretty decent uh, after his winning debut. He's held it quite well. You know, he's got mainly sprint form, uh, ran fourth behind Kings Bay, of course, won a big race at Clarewood today. So I would think that you're not far off the mark. I would think Emperor Niakos is one that's certainly worth considering for the quartets. But finding winners on this card is not easy. This looks like a race where you can possibly have a go. Would, uh, would you guys tend to think that, uh, that Mgeo... I know it comes early in the day. It could be one of the better bets on the card. Justin? You know, it's a hard one with these two-year-olds. They're hard to predict how much they're improving. I wouldn't, it's by no means a strike for me. I think there's better bets on the day, uh, better each way and better uh, win bets. But I definitely fancy it in this type of race. I think we need to see how it prices up. Because a horse like this has the potential to open up deep in the red, which there'd be no value at considering the possible improvements of the other horses. But... Um, you know, also Gravel first time, 1900. It's a hard one, but I, I think she'll, uh, he will be a, a, a definite favourite and um, probably the one to beat, yeah. Jeff Woodruff has got a runner. Robbie Frad's been in a lot of form. Uh, certainly got a wonderful pedigree, the son of Houston A. Delicious Damowin. Form is not too bad, but obviously a bit of a concern that he seems to have a bit of a respiratory problem, Sheldon. He's uh, made a breathing noise both starts, but... Possibly one that they're going to have to operate on, but they're obviously delaying that. That's always a big concern, especially once they go a trip. You can get away with it up to 14, maybe even 1,600. Once you go the extended distances, the 1,800s to the 2,000s, and there's those respiratory noises, there's always going to be some complications in the running. Okay, you're one, two, three in this race, uh, Sheldon, and I'm going to ask uh, Justin the same question. I'll go number four, I'm Gio, to beat number two, Emperor Neocus, and number 10, Gone Baby Gone. Justin? Personally, I'd go with Mgeo as well. I think Delaware Bay second and then Gone Baby Gone third. So Delaware Bay amongst the winners. Before mm. leaving the race, I think it's uh, it's always a landmark occasion when a trainer has his first Vodacom Durban July runners uh, in, in any of the races on the big day. And I think for Robbie Hill, it's obviously he's got off to a really nice start as a trainer. He's made an auspicious start quietly getting the winners and going about his business. And, and he's also in this race, I know he's poorly drawn, but... Uh, does come in with some nice form, Melanomesta. Any kind of chance in your view of finishing into the quartet, uh, Sheldon? I think you've got to respect him for the quartet play. If you look at that run to Captain's Reserve, he finished ahead of Emperor Nyaka, so doesn't get the 4kg claim this time around. But he's a type of horse that you, you can throw into the quartet. It'll be nice for Robbie Hill to have a place on the day. And if, uh, if he gets into the winner's enclosure, it'll be a bonus. Let's move on to the third race, which is the first leg of the place accumulator. It's a Mango 2200 Grade 3. This is, in effect, the Vodacom Durban July Consolation Race. And it's headed by Master Plan, who won the Champions Cup at Gravel last season. We've got 